Hey guys, um, this is just a continuation of our previous video. Um, let me just remind you, in the previous video, we took s to be the integers from 1 up to p minus 1 over 2, and we had an integer b, not divisible by p, and we multiplied every element by, of s by b to get this s prime. So s prime is like b, 2b, all the way up to p minus 1 over 2 times b. And we proved that if you have a integer, a unit modulo p, we can write it uniquely as epsilon times s, where s is an element of this s, and epsilon is either plus or minus 1. And we can also write it as epsilon prime time s prime, where s prime is in s prime, and epsilon prime is again plus or minus 1. Okay, and now going off of that, for each integer r from 1 up to p minus 1 over 2, we take r and multiply it by b, then we can write it as epsilon r, either plus or minus 1, times sr. Okay, so we're taking each element of s, s prime, and writing it as either plus or minus 1 times an element of s. Okay, and we get epsilon r and sr. Okay. And let's just do a quick example so that you see what I mean. Let's try p equals 11 and b equals 2. So here's s and here's s prime in this situation. p minus 1 over 2 is 11 minus 1 divided by 2. That's 10 over 2. That's 5. If the integer is from 1 up to 5, then we take each one and multiply by b. So you have the even integers from, from 2 to 10. Okay, and that's s. That's s prime. And then... Um, for each element, for 1 up to 5, we take 2 times it and then write it as epsilon times s. Okay, so we're going to take 2 and write it as either plus or minus 1 times an element of s. Well, that's easy. So we start with 2. 2 here, this element, is just 1 times this element. So epsilon, well, that will be epsilon 1 and s1. So epsilon 1 is 1 and s1 is 2. So this element is 1 times 2. 4 is just 1 times 4. Okay, so that means epsilon 2 is going to be 1 and s2 is going to be 4. Now 6, remember 6 plus 5 is 0, because yeah. 6 plus 5 is 11. So 6 is negative 5. So 6 is telling us about um, epsilon 3 and s3. So since 6 is negative 1 times 5, epsilon 3 is negative 1, and s3 is 5. And now for s4, epsilon 4, we look at 8, so 6 and 5. 8 is really negative 3. Okay, so we write 8 as negative 1 times 3, so epsilon 4 is negative 1, and s4 is 3. Finally, we have 10 is negative 1, so that's... Um, that's the last remaining one. So 10 is really negative 1 times 1. So epsilon 5 is negative 1 and s5 is 1. Okay, and now, um, and, and that's it for the epsilons and s's. Right. Okay, and what we want to see is that notice, as we look at the s's, um, we have that s1 s2, s3, s4, s5 is just a permutation of s. So let's make like a table. Let's make a table. We have r and we have sr and epsilon r. Um, so s2 is, so we have 2, 4, 5, 3, 1, and then we have 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. That gives us our um, our s's and, and epsilons, right? And notice that um, the second row is just a rearrangement of the first row. Okay, and we would just want to explain, we just want to write a proposition that says this always happens, that uh, this, this second, this r going from r and sr, like, uh, SR is like a permutation. Okay. Okay, so proposition.
we'll just try and gather uh, that um, first of all we'll say that if you look at plus or minus b times r that's the same as plus or minus s sub r okay. for all r going from 1 up to p minus 1 over 2 okay second statement is that um, as a corollary of this uh, if I look at s1, s2 up to s p minus 1 over 2 that's just a rearrangement of the integers from p minus 1 over from 1 up to p minus 1 over 2 So another way to say this, in other words, um, the s1 up to sp minus 1 over 2 is a, rear, or a permutation of 1 up to p minus 1 over 2. So let's um let's prove this proposition. Okay. Let's 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 fix R and write you know B R equals Epsilon R S R where Epsilon R equals either Epsilon R is either 1 or negative 1. Okay. If Epsilon R is negative 1, what happens? Well, then BR is equal to negative SR, and then negative BR is equal to SR. And that's a, so if we look at BR and negative BR, that's the same as negative SR, S sub R, and SR, and that's what we want. Right? And the same is true if epsilon r is 1, you know, it's just br is, is the same as sr, so br with negative br is just the same as sr and negative sr as, as we want it. Okay. And now, um, this, this, um, this second part comes from uh, the uniqueness we have at, at for for each uh, element of each unit mod p as a, like an element of s times plus or minus one. Okay. So 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 now um, so notice. You know how how notice that U P is plus or minus B plus or minus two B all the way up to plus or minus P minus one over two B. Okay. And we can write this as like disjoint unions plus or minus B plus or minus two B and so on. Oops, union plus or minus p minus one over two b. Okay. But each one of these we've seen like plus or minus b is just the is just plus or minus s one. And then we have plus or minus s two. And finally we have plus or minus s r. But uh, another way to write up is as plus or minus one union plus or minus two. Oops, this should be p minus one over two. 
Okay. And so how can this be? Well, um, the only thing that can happen is that uh, there must be a way to match up each one of these with each each one each one here, because um, here I have two p minus one over two disjoint sets. And here I have at most p minus one over two disjoint sets, so I have to have exactly p minus one over two. Okay, so like for example, like um, say say that two didn't occur as one of the s's, like s one up to s p minus one over two. Well, that would mean that um, two of the like two of the s's must overlap. A and that would mean, like, um, you uh, on this row you would have uh, like strictly less than p minus one elements, uh, but you have to have exactly p minus one elements. Okay. Anyways, um, so so um, these s's is just a rearrangement of the integers from one up to p minus one over two. Okay. And now we can state Gauss's lemma. And what does it say? Well, it just says that um, you look at the Legendre symbol of B, it's really uh, the epsilons, the product of the epsilons. Okay. Proof. Well, first, we'll write out. Um, we'll calculate. Let's let's we'll write out like a a product. So we'll call it like sigma. I mean, sigma is, should be some, I guess. But so, so sorry about that. But we'll look at b times two b all the way up to p minus 1 over 2 times b. Okay. And we'll call that sigma. And we'll calculate sigma in two different ways. So the first way is we'll write it as, we'll factor out a b from each of these p minus 1 over 2 things. We'll, we'll look at b to the p minus 1 over 2 times p minus 1 over 2 factorial. Because we have p minus one over two, um, p minus three over two, all the way down to two times one, like that. Okay, so that's one way to calculate sigma. But we'll all, we're calculating sigma mod p, right? So now sigma mod p is really well, like we can write b as epsilon one times s one. We can write two b as epsilon two times s two. All the way up to s, or sorry, epsilon p minus one over two, s p minus one over two. Okay, and this is true mod p. And now um, we'll write the epsilons and s is separate. So we have epsilon one, epsilon two, all the way up to epsilon p minus one over two, and we have s one, s two, all the way up to s p minus one over two, mod p. Okay, but now this S1, S2, this is just like some um, product, but uh, the terms in the product are just like one, two, all the way up to P minus one over two, just in a different order. Just to go back to our example, if you remember, we had, uh, you know, when we were looking at R and SR, we had Like this, right? And then epsilon r was one, one, negative one, negative one, negative one. Okay. 
So now if you multiply all these different SRs together, well, you just get the product from one up to five. Okay, so this is really epsilon one, epsilon two, all the way up to epsilon p minus one over two times one times two times three, all the way up to p minus one over two. Okay. And what we're really using there is this fact that uh, here from this proposition that the S is like the S1 up to S P minus one over two is a permutation of one up to P minus one over two. Okay. And now I'll look at sigma. It's so these two expressions for sigma must be congruent mod P is what we've shown. So therefore B to the P minus one over two times P minus one over two factorial is congruent to the product epsilon one, epsilon two up to epsilon P minus one over two. And then here we have a term of P minus one over two factorial. So this is true mod P. Well, um, this number, this is just a number that's prime, co-prime to P. And it occurs on both sides of the congruence so you can just cancel it. Okay, so therefore B to the P minus one over two is congruent to epsilon one to epsilon p minus one over two mod p and b to the p minus one over two well that's congruent to the Legendre symbol of b mod p okay. and now um, here we have a plus or minus one depending and on here we have a product of some some ones and some negative ones so here we have a plus or minus one so if I have something that's plus or minus one congruent to something else plus or minus one um, Actually, like whether if it, whether it's plus one or negative one, it has to be equal. So what this means, since p is odd, the Legendre symbol, oops, b over p or b, Legendre symbol b mod p is just equal to this epsilon one, epsilon two, all the way up to epsilon p minus one over two. Okay. And then as a corollary, let us now calculate the Legendre symbol of two mod P. Okay. And what should we show? Um, I guess let's show that it's uh, minus one to the P squared minus one over eight. for as long as p is odd. Okay. And let's prove this using Gauss's lemma. Okay. So, for r equals one, two, up to p minus one over two, right, 2r equals epsilon r times sr. Okay. Now, as long as r is greater than, um, or sorry, as long as 2r is bigger than p minus 1 over 2, then we'll need, then, um, We'll, we'll be in the situation where since r only goes up to p minus 1 over 2, we'll have p minus 1 over 2 is less than 2r is less than or equal to p minus 1. And that means that um, we'll write, we'll be able to write 2r equals um, negative p minus 2r which will be like a negative one times um, right? negative one times an element of s. So for 2r in this range, p minus 2r will be in the range from 1 up to p minus 1 over 2. Okay. Okay, and the question is, um, 
For how many R's does this happen? And, it, and it, the answer is it depends, right? Okay. So, um, so our goal is to show the the that the number of r between one and p minus one over two is such that p minus one over two is less than or equal to two r. I'm sorry, is strictly less than two r. Is less than or equal to p minus one. Um, as like the like is has p squared minus one over eight elements up to a multiple of two. So let's say this has um, k elements, and our goal is to show that k is congruent to p squared minus 1 over 8 mod 2. Okay, that is our goal. Okay, um, I'm sure there's a tricky way to do this, but we can just like, um, we can just try and uh, do it in a like case by case kind of way, All right? Um, this is our goal. So first, you know, it kind of depends whether or not p minus one or over two is um, is an even or an odd number. Okay. So first case. Um, P minus one over two is let's say it's even. Well then, um, right? P minus one over two equals two m. Okay. So then, p minus one equals four m, and we have to count. So. The number of r between one and so p minus one over two is two m, between one and two m such that um, again p minus one over two is two m. Two m is less than two r, which is less than or equal to four m. Okay, and if I rewrite this e e this equation, it just says m is less than r is less than or equal to two m. There is m things in this range. So this tells us that k equals m, and we want to show that, and, and now let's look at what is p squared minus one over eight, because there's like m integers from bigger than m, but less than or equal to two m. Okay. What, what, what is p squared minus one over eight? We want to show it's congruent to m. So first, let's factorize it. It's just p minus one over four times p plus one over two. P minus one over four is just m, and p plus one over two is just um, one plus this, so it's m times two m plus one. Okay. And notice this is congruent to m mod 2. Because 2m plus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 2. Okay. So if p minus 1 over 2 is even, we've um we've established that uh, the number of R such that two R's in this range is K and K is congruent to P squared over minus one over eight. And the number of like R's in this set, that's the number of negative ones you get from Gauss's lemma. Okay. 
Now what if p minus 1 over 2, 2 is odd? Well, it's just a similar Well, you just write p minus 1 over 2 equals 2m plus 1. Um, p minus 1 is therefore um, 2m plus 2, or sorry, uh, 4m plus 2. Okay, and now we have to count the number of one of r's in the range um, 1 up to 2m plus 1. Remember, we're looking at p minus 1 over 2 is 2m plus 1 now such that 2m plus 1 is less than 2r is less than or equal to 4m plus 2. Okay, and how, how many things are in this range? Well, um, we can rewrite it. We can rewrite 2m plus 1 less than 2r as 2m plus 2 less than or equal to 2r, because 2m plus 1 is odd, 2r is even. So now we solve 2m plus 2 less than or equal to 2r is less than or equal to 4m plus 2, and how many things are in this range? Well, it's the same as m plus 1 less than or equal to r less than or equal to 2m plus 1. Okay. And how many r's are in this range? Well, we have, um, if you think about it, um, yeah, I guess you should just do this. Subtract this. Add one. And you get 2m plus 1 minus m plus 1 plus 1. You get um, m plus 1. So, so k, which is the number of elements of this set, is m plus 1. And now let's look at p squared minus 1 over 8. So now we get, so it's p minus 1 over 2 times p plus 1 over 4. p minus 1 over 2 is 2m plus 1. And what's p plus 1 divided by 4? Well, that's so p plus 1 is um, 4m plus 4, and divided by 4 is m plus 1. Okay, and now m plus 1 is just congruent to, or 2m plus 1 times m plus 1 is congruent to m plus 1 mod 2. So that tells us that k, which is m plus 1, is congruent to p squared minus 1 over 8. Therefore, minus 1 to the k is congruent to minus 1 to the p squared minus 1 over 8 mod, mod, mod or just in general, right? These two are, this, or they're just equal. Okay, and minus 1 to the k, that's the Legendre symbol of 2. And, and that completes the proof. And now you, you could also look at like what is minus one to the p squared minus one over eight. Um, it, it is just like a congruence for p mod eight. It just says so like um, as another corollary, you can say that the Legendre symbol of two mod p is. Um, So I think if you look at, uh, so if p is congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 8, then um, let me, maybe I have it wrong. So, oh no, I think I have it wrong. Um, so, so, 
So if P, if you write P equals R plus eight times K, right? And, and, and then, so you look at P squared, Um, you can write it as r squared times 8k prime p squared minus 1 over 8 is just going to be r squared minus 1 over 8 plus k prime oh sorry um it's best just, I guess we could just plug in values, plug in one, three, five, seven, and see whether you, what, what, what you get, right? So um, if you plug in one, you get P squared minus one is zero. So you get, um, so let's see. So let's rewrite this. Two over P is equal to something if P is congruent to one mod eight gonna be something else if p is congruent to 3 mod 8, if p is congruent to 5 mod 8, and if p is congruent to 7 mod 8, what do you get? For 1 you get um, p squared minus 1 over 8 is 0, so you'll get uh, negative 1 to the 0, 1. For 3 you'll get um, 9, 9 minus 1 is 8, divided by 8 is 1, so you'll get negative 1 to the 1, that's negative 1. For 5, you'll get 24, sorry, p squared would be 25, minus 1 is 24, divided by 8 is 3, so you'll get minus 1 to the 3. Or, yeah, so you get negative 1, and then for 7, you get um, 49, minus 1 is 48, divided by 8, that's 6, and minus 1 to the 6 is 1, so you get 1. So this is the situation. Okay. Um, and there's, sorry if this video is long, there's just one more thing we want to notice. Um, so far, 2 over the Legendre symbol of 2 mod p depends on congruences or P mod 8. The Legendre symbol of negative 1 over P depends on congruences for P mod 4. And in fact what we're going to see is that um, the Legendre symbol for A over P depends on congruences for A, or sorry, for P mod 4A. And this is, um, I'll put an exclamation, part, exclamation point, this is like quite surprising, because by the definition it should only depend on A mod P. There's no, or I mean there is a reason it's true, but um, there's like um, no good reason that it should depend on P mod, well, not A, but mod 4A. Okay, so that should be very surprising to you. Well, actually, it doesn't have to be. I mean, it, wasn't, it definitely wasn't surprising to me at first, but when you think about it, it is actually surprising. Okay, um, that is the end. Sorry about the long video. Uh, so we'll pick up again soon. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.